Welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel. Yeah, today I would like to show you a nice mainboard I got donated to my museum. Um, it's a Unit Chief 386 mainboard. And yeah, I would like to share with you how I'm going to refurbish a mainboard like that, how I'm cleaning it, how we fix some problems, and of course we will check at the end if it's posting proper and working fine. The first problem I can see already is this typical bad uh, rechargeable battery. There are some liquids coming out of this battery and parts of the board around uh, is already oxidizing. So we have to clean this, replace the battery with something similar or even something better. And yeah, let's give it a try. Yeah, and here the nice board. Actually, it's written here Unichip 386 WB Revision 1.0. Yeah, as I mentioned already, it's a very, very small board. So uh, it's very compact and yeah, let's see. Uh, where I'm going to use it. Um, what kind of connectors do we have here? So we have five 16-bit ISA connectors, we have one 8-bit ISA connector, here we have um, eight uh, sockets for the 30-pin RAM, here we have the socket for the 387 coprocessor, here of course the processor, actually it's an DX33 uh, uh, Intel processor, uh, very nice, we have here 128 kilobytes of second level cache installed also on this board. On this board. Yeah, here the keyboard connector, here is the BIOS chip actually from 1987, Ami BIOS. And here we can see our problem. So these old batteries, these rechargeable batteries, when they're getting old, there are some kind of liquids coming out of the of the battery and, and affecting the, the board and, 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 and metal around. So you can see here already it's, it's, it's oxidizing. So we definitely have to remove this battery, replace it with something similar or even better. I think I will go for a gold cap um, capacitor with one farad. Uh, should be a proper solution um, instead of these old nickel cadmium batteries. Yeah, all in all, a very nice board in very good shape and yeah. Yeah, of course, before we start with anything, we are going to remove all the, the, the RAM and the CPU and the SD memory from the board to avoid any, any damages. So. What the heck? Actually, eight RAMs, nice, populated. I think this rim was never removed the last 30 years. So, yeah, to remove uh, dip chips or PGA chips, I just took a flattened screwdriver and I bent it a little bit around. This gives me a nice tool to remove some chips from the sockets. Yeah, straight without any bent pins.
Yeah, now we have here this uh, battery soldered out of the board. Um, as a replacement, I'm going to use this 1 farad gold cap capacitor. Usually these kind of capacitors are used in electronic devices to uh, keep CMOS data. Um, yeah, should be also fine for this board, so the voltage is maximum to 5.5 volt. Um, the battery here gets charged um, with about 4 volt, I guess, because it's a 3.6 um, volt nickel cadmium battery. Yeah. This capacitor should absolutely uh, do its job inside this board. Um, I'm going to extend a little bit these connectors uh, to solder it uh, nicely to this place. Finished with the soldering, so I'm quite happy with the job and the capacitor fits really perfectly here in between uh, and doesn't look that bad. And the board is protected for the future, so no oxidation or any chemicals from the nickel cadmium battery anymore. I cannot see any other issues on this board, so this should work fine and now we can go for cleaning. For cleaning the board I'm using a common bath cleaner and an old toothbrush and of course some warm water. To avoid any ESD damages on your board just be sure that you're not wearing uh, any synthetic clothes that your body get charged too much. Yeah, to dry the board, just put it into the oven, set the oven to 50 degrees and leave it there for about an hour. Yeah, one hour later and the cake is ready. Yeah, after one hour in the oven the board is fully dry now. I'm very happy with the result. The board looks like new and shining, so there's no dust and dirt remaining on the main board anymore. Also the, the, the area where we did the repairing looks very nice now. Yeah, I'm looking forward um, to test the board. But before we can do this, we have to put all the parts back into its sockets. We are ready now to test the board and see if it's posting. For the video card I'm using a 16-bit ISA card, the Trident 9000. It's absolutely enough for this system with 512 kilobyte of video memory. We are now ready to power up the system. We will see if the board is posting. We are going to do some changes in the setup to save the setup and switch off the system again that we can test if our repairing with the gold cap capacitor was successful. Yeah, then power up. Yeah, so the system is already posting, very nice. Yeah, and here we can see also the RAM now counting up. As I expected, up to 8 megabytes. Very nice. So, the board is working, that's very good. So, okay, we have here the CMOS checksum failure. Uh, this is because of the uh, 
battery which was defective so let's enter the setup so now we are on the setup very nice so let's check and set the, the date nicely Yeah, and let's see if it's posting normal now without the CMOS checksum failure. Yes, so the FTD controller failure is also just normal because there is a set a floppy disk drive by common setting in the in the setup. Yeah, so so far quite fine. Um, I will switch off the system now. We'll wait, I would say half an hour and check the BIOS again if the time settings are still there. If yes. Our repairing was successful. Yeah, after some while, actually some days already, it's time to switch on the system again to see if the capacitor was holding the set date and time in the BIOS. So the system is posting already, entering the BIOS. Yeah, and here we can nicely see the date and the time is right. So the capacitor was doing its job instead of the nickel cadmium battery. Perfect. Now it's time to put some cards into the system that we can boot up and test it nicely and play some games. Yeah, I've set up now the system here. We have here a, 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 just a common I.O. controller, a Winbond I.O. controller to connect our, our drives. Still the Trident VGA graphic card with 512 kilobytes of video memory and the Sound Blaster 16, actually a CT2970. Yeah, for hard disk you could use the real retro ones or something like that. This is a flash module from Dell Lock. Um, it has just a common IDE interface. Uh, uh, yes, and you can use it like a normal hard disk drive. The benefit of these things are they're much smaller, not so noisy like a hard drive and of course faster. What else do we need? Um, I prepared some kind of uh, LED with a connector connect it to the uh, to the pin header of the main board this gives a nice indication that the motherboard is um, supplied and of course also a reset switch sometimes it might be useful to have a reset button also and these small um, things here um, are very compact and you don't have any cablings around and so Perfect. What else do we need? Just a common PC speaker. Yeah, so everything connected now. <clears throat> now we are ready to boot up. Yeah, so the system is posting already. We will enter again the BIOS to set the right values for our flash drive. This BIOS version has a nice auto-detect function for hard drives, but unfortunately it's not working for these kind of flash drives. Therefore we have to enter the values manually now. We have to change this to 47 user type. So entering a, a floppy drive we, we don't need one because everything is already uh, installed on the flash drive so let's give it a try yeah the system is nicely booting now and also found the, the creative sound cluster 16 card very nice 
Yeah, first of all, I'm going to open Norton System Information. So this is a very nice program to check quickly your hardware. So we can see here 386 with 33 megahertz, uh, no coprocessor, uh, VESA compatible VGA card, 500 megabytes of, of hard disk drive. For some reason it's showing here a 360 kilobyte um, uh, floppy drive, which is not installed and also not set in the BIOS. Mm, strange. Then 8 megabytes of RAM. So everything quite fine. Let's do a quick CPU benchmarking. So we can see here a rating of 36. Um, it's actually 0.1 higher than 386, 33 MHz rated here in the table. So very nice. So this tells me that everything is set up by the right way and working quite fine. Yeah, then let's check out some games. Of course, I'm playing Prince of Persia. I love this game from back in the days. Oh my goodness, long time I didn't play it. And the sound is also working quite fine. This game. It reminds me back in the days when I was playing Prince of Persia after school instead of studying. It was funny. Let's check out something else. I'm just curious if Doom is running on a 386. I'm not quite sure. Let's see and give it a try. So, so far so good. Let's try. I'm curious if it's playable or not. Oh, I can see already the frame rate is very bad. Let's give it a try. Mm. Yeah, so it's almost not playable. I might decrease a little bit the screen size and the frame rate should go a little bit up. Yeah, now it's definitely playable. Quite nice. But still hard because we have for sure below 20 frames per second. I didn't expect that it's running so smooth, but definitely I cannot recommend playing Doom on a 386. So, let's check out also Pinball Dreams, also one of my favorite games back in the days. a long time I didn't play this but now I have the perfect hardware for this retro gaming Nice colors, nice game, nice sound, very entertaining and very retro. Mm. 
I have also something else now in my mind to try. Actually, it's a tech demo from the 90s, Crystal Dream. Um, it was one of the best uh, tech demos of the 90s, and yeah, I love this amazing sound and uh, these graphics from these days. It was impressive at the time. I can remember it was supposed to start on a 40 day 6 to run smoothly, but I would like to give it a try now. Yeah, perfect. It's running very nice. All in all, we have here a very nice retro computer for gaming purposes or any other kind of old software, equipped with a 386, the first 32-bit microprocessor from Intel. For one of my next episodes, I would like to test different floating point units. There were several brands existing on the market and we would like to do some benchmarks to find out which one was the fastest. And this mainboard is perfect for this because of this PGA socket for these floating point units. Thanks a lot for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, please subscribe below if you want to follow and have a nice day.